Hi guys. God, jeez. I'm back with some more Borderlands content. And this time, I'm bringing you an update to the original Unlimited Keys video. As some people in the comments have let me know that I've missed a few methods. I'm over here! I'm down here! So if you're looking for the easiest way to get diamond keys, then this video is for you. As I'll be showing you multiple methods to not only get your hands on these, from the legit ways to the, uh, not so legit. <laughs> but I'll also show you multiple methods to use your newfound diamond key collection to farm pretty much infinite legendaries. Here they come! Woo! Oh, and for those of you without a Schluter, I've even come up with some methods for you. But there is a catch with the best one. Now I'm sure there are tons of equations and calculations that could be performed to show you how well this increases the overall drop percentage rates, but... That sentence had too many syllables! Apologize! Well, yeah. Basically, with these methods, you should be looking at literal walls full of legendaries to choose from, in your diamond loot room. And even your golden key chest should be packed full of legendaries. So if this is something you're interested in, then you may want to stick around. Please, please, please! I'll give you my blood! Right, so we should probably get started. Now as always, I'll try to keep these methods as noob friendly as possible. <laughs> but if you do get stuck, just let me know in the comments down below and I'll see what I can do. However, this also means that you may have heard some of this before. Big deal! Not disorganized as shit. But if you need to, feel free to skip ahead between the sections. Now if you somehow don't know what diamond keys are, or where the diamond key room is at all, it can be found right here, at the front of the ship in Sanctuary. It's basically right under the flight deck here. And diamond keys are just like golden keys, on steroids. Oh, fuck yeah! And instead of a small chance to get some legendary gear, it's pretty much guaranteed. This is literally the greatest thing that has ever happened! Remember, once you take anything from a wall, it shuts itself off. So again, you can only get up to four pieces of loot at one time. One from each of these walls. And then a bonus item once the timer runs out. So once you get yourself a key, or 10, or 50, or say, a thousand or more, you can easily use them here to get some pretty decent legendary gear. But this is all dependent on you having diamond keys to begin with. So let's move on to the farming methods. I'll start with the legit way to farm diamond keys. That would be farming vault cards for diamond keys. Now this is only really available if you have the Director's Cut DLC. With this, you'll have access to vault cards, and as soon as you can, you'll want to activate whichever card it is you plan on using. But the basics of it are that you can earn XP and get extra loot just by playing the game. There are also daily and weekly challenges that give you an XP boost. And as you level up your card, you'll score a Vault Card Chest that's unique to the Vault Card that you've currently got activated. Inside these chests, you can get anything from a piece of gear, a cosmetic item, iridium, a Vault Card Key, or even a Diamond Key. Although Diamond Keys are rare, you can legitimately farm them just by playing the game. Now the easiest method for Infinite Keys is the Farming Glitch. And this method relies on you having already used a shift code to unlock a Diamond Key so that you have a diamond key ready to redeem in your inventory in your mail. But you can't have used it already. And unfortunately, at the time of recording this, there are no active diamond key shift codes for me to tell you. And there aren't even permanent diamond key shift codes like there are for golden keys. However, if a shift code does come out, I'll try and leave it in the description down below. Right, now you may already know this method, but if you don't, it's basically identical to the golden key farming glitch. To do this, simply load up the game online, and then once online, go into your settings and go offline, before you claim your keys. Now, simply redeem a key, and then save and quit to the menu. Then, reload and reclaim the key again. It's really that simple. Seriously, you can do this over and over and over again, as many times as you need. Again, this method is identical for both golden keys and diamond keys. So if you know how to do the golden key method, the diamond key is exactly the same. But if you accidentally forgot and went and claimed your keys online, then you're stuck until you can get another shift code. But don't worry, there are still some other tricks we can use. 
This next method is useful if you accidentally claimed your keys online, like me. <laughs> but you still haven't used them yet. Now you can easily do this solo, as all you need is a dummy account as player two. All you need to do to have unlimited keys is ensure that your save is backed up to the cloud, and then go into your settings and go offline. Now you can use your diamond key without ever having to worry about it running out, provided you do the next steps correctly. So run around, grab all the gear you want, and then simply trade the items to your dummy account. Make sure your dummy account saves and exits. Now delete your main save and reload while online. This will resync your save and you'll have your diamond keys back. And to get your gear, simply trade it back to yourself from your dummy account. If you're not new to this channel, you'll know I call my dummy account Carl. That way, every time I need to do this, I just call in Carl! 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 Now, if you're on PC or PlayStation, there's an even easier method. As you can simply back up your profile, as the keys are saved separately to the main save. So before using a key, remember to back up your profile, then simply jump in game and use as many keys as you can. That way, you can take full advantage of the diamond loot room without ever having to worry about losing a key. So after you're finished running around here and grabbing everything you can, after saving your game, simply restore your profile, which has your keys from before you used them. Here, you can see that, once again, I have 50 keys back, and still have the gear that I acquired from the diamond loot room. Just be careful, because if you do it this way, do not put any new loot back into your bank, as when you restore your profile, anything you've added will be lost. Now for these next methods, I would normally give you a word of warning, but... You are micromanaging! Exactly. You guys are grown-ass adults, so you can decide whether you want to use these or not. Now if you don't have any keys at all, and you can't wait to unlock one via a shift code or even via a vault card if you have the director's cut, you could always drop yourself a diamond key from a modded save. This method is as easy as it sounds. Simply grab yourself a modded save from your favorite location, and ideally give it to your dummy account to drop off to yourself, or even use your own account and put some keys into your bank for later use by your actual main save. So how exactly do these work? Well, it's pretty straightforward. Simply drop the keys out of your backpack and collect them. Ta-da! Unlimited keys. <laughs> awesome! Now this method does work for Xbox users too. All it takes is some cross-platform gameplay. So you'll either need someone who plays on PC or have the game on both PC and Xbox. That way, you can either have a key dropped off to you whenever you need it, or better yet, trade it to yourself. If you trade these back to your dummy account, it's even easier, as you can now go offline, have the dummy account drop the keys to you whenever you need them, and then delete the dummy account save. So when it resyncs, it'll have the keys again. Now the next method for PC users is using a trainer. And there are obviously trainers for Borderlands 3 that give you options that go far beyond giving yourself unlimited keys. And this one is straightforward. Simply find the option for unlimited keys and then use it in-game. An alternative to this is to use Cheat Engine and a Cheat Engine table for Borderlands 3. But the basics of this are exactly the same. Both of these allow you to do on-the-fly editing and manipulation of the game. So obviously there are a ton of extra things that these can do besides simply maxing out your diamond keys. Lastly, for PC and PlayStation users, you could always just fire up a save editor, or more accurately, a profile editor. With this tool, you could simply change the number of diamond keys that you have, along with pretty much anything else you can think of, including duplicating weapons and gear, modding weapons, or even importing items that you don't even have or literally couldn't have. It's a pretty useful tool. Personally, I'm more for using the legit options if I can, and the built-in glitch. But that's just me, and I'm not here to tell you whether you should or shouldn't do this, or how to enjoy a game that you spent cold hard cash on. That's for you to decide. You do you. Now before we move on to the farming methods, I want to thank you again, as thanks to you, I've been able to move my channel's relationship with YouTube back up to the next level. What? Like eight? 
What? N no. I don't have time for this. Get get out of here then. But no, no. Thanks to your support, my channel has now been officially undemonetized or uh, re-monetized or monetized. I don't know. What's the right word here? Now I know my channel is still small, and in the grand scape of YouTube, I'm downright tiny. So please don't let my channel puff out of existence. And join me in the ongoing fight against the YouTube algorithm by giving this video a like, leaving a comment down below, and if you haven't already, subscribe and ring that bell so you don't miss any future content. And if you think anyone else will enjoy this, give it a share. It always helps. Right, now all of these methods will work for all characters. So you won't need to have a specific build that works with only one character or anything. However, to do this, most of these methods are going to rely on the Schluter artifact, as this is what's giving us the insane legendary drop rate. You can see here that on kill, you get a 12 second window where the world drop legendary chance is increased by 1000%. Now you will need to have the director's cut to obtain this, as it is a vault card reward on the Welcome to Pandora vault card, and you'll need 5 keys to unlock it. And again, you can easily rack up keys by playing the game and completing daily and weekly challenges. Now there is a workaround to this if you don't have the director's cut, but that's coming up in a later section. Now for the first solo method, what you'll also need is a TDL weapon that on reload will turn into a turret that explodes after 30 seconds. And you don't need any special weapon, any weapon that has that ability will do really. But if you don't have one, you can always go to Marcus's and check out if there are any in stock. Ah, there you are. But if there aren't, or if you're just wanting something guaranteed, I got this with the legendary Polybus shotgun. But because it's a TDO weapon, it can spawn with various abilities on weapon throw. So you'd have to hope you get the right one. It can be farmed from Genevieve. Now if you've forgotten where she is, you can find Genevieve on Eden 6 in the Voracious Canopy. Right here. But like any farming methods, it may take quite a few times of going down here before she finally gives up the goods and gives you the gun. You're a little f***ing freak, I like hanging out with you. Right, now whether hey. you have a polybus or some other weapon, you'll want to head to Ellie's garage. What's that, BH? Bye. As it's here that you can spawn in a vehicle that when destroyed, activates the Schluter's effects. You also want to check that the reload damage from the turret is strong enough to take out the vehicle. Because if one's not enough, you'll need to go and throw down two. See? Perfect. Also, make sure you don't throw it directly onto the vehicle, otherwise it'll just explode. Ha -ha, boom! <laughs> you can see clearly that after each explosion, the Schluter has been activated by the green aura that's on the left and right side of the HUD. Alright, I got it. Now what? Right, so with the basics out of the way, now's the fun part. We're going to throw down a turret and use that 30 second window to get from Ellie's garage to the diamond loot room. And then use the key just as the Schluter is activated. So take the stairs behind you and now head up to the loot room. We need to make a beeline to the diamond room. Now 30 seconds should be plenty of time to get here just by sprinting. And you shouldn't need any special slide skills or anything. But if you do have those, obviously you can use them to cut down the time just a bit. You'll know that the gun has exploded and taken out the vehicle when you see the green glow on your left and right side. This is signaling that the Schluter is now activated. Now simply use the diamond key and let it do its thing. And this here looks like a great haul. Virtually everything is legendary, with only a few exceptions. I guess it's not all guaranteed to be this good, but it's a perfect example. Now the next solo method is a variation on the previous method that we're now going to use for the golden key chest. And I get it, you may be thinking, why would I need that when I have the diamond loot room? Well, the golden key chest is actually better than the diamond loot room in one very specific way. In the diamond loot room, you can only really get shields, weapons, and grenade bombs. Whereas the golden key chest also pumps out all that and class mods and artifacts. Oh snap! Plot twist! Now if you don't already have infinite golden keys, don't worry, I've got you covered. Just follow the link above or you'll find more information in the description down below. Now for this method, just like the previous method, it relies on you having a Schluter 
and spawning a vehicle that when destroyed activates the Schluter's effects. Explosions? Oh, fuck yeah! <laughs> However, it's even easier than before, as all we need to do now is spawn in a vehicle and then shoot it. But unlike the diamond loot room, 12 seconds is more than enough time to get from the cargo bay to the golden key chest. But to make it even easier, you can shoot from up here, giving you a few extra seconds. Right, with the Schluter activated, we just run up and open the golden key chest. And open! Ooh, shiny! While everything in this run didn't turn out to be legendary, most of it is, including a class mod and an artifact. Actually, over here there's another legendary artifact. So that's two legendary artifacts and one legendary class mod. Not bad for one golden key. Now I know you don't get to pick and choose like you do in the diamond loot room, and it's definitely not as impressive when opening up, but it's still pretty good, especially if you're looking for class mods or artifacts. Now the next solo method actually works just with the all-in shield, meaning if you didn't buy the director's cut, provided you have the handsome jackpot DLC, you could always chuck on an all-in shield. Now this shield is special, as when it takes damage, it has a 15% chance to drop a luck booster, which increases the world drop legendary chance by 1000% for 15 seconds. Now you can't normally farm for this, as it's a quest reward for completing the Regaining One's Feet quest from All In Allen, who you'll find right here in the grand opening map. However, there is a chance that it can show up within the diamond loot room itself, so keep an eye out. Provided you at least have access to the shield, all you need to do to get your 1000% increase in legendary drop chance is damage your shield and hope for a luck booster to pop out. Now from testing this out, at least for me, the results didn't seem to be the same as the Schluter, but they were pretty decent. You can see here that there do seem to be a few more epic rarity drops compared to the normal Schluter runs, but there are also a fair few legendaries here too. And actually, nothing here seems to be lower than epic, which is pretty decent. Now this next part is optional, but because we know that the diamond loot room and the golden key chest are both affected by improving the world legendary drop chance, that means that there is something else that we can do to easily improve our odds even further even when playing solo. We could drink some, uh, Buttstellian milk. Innuendo! And it's not as gross as it sounds. And although from testing, this seemingly may or may not boost your legendary chances by much at all, every little bit helps, especially if you're trying to boost this solo. To get this, you simply need to play the Borderlands Science game. This is located in with Tannis, in the infirmary slash laboratory. Now this game was apparently developed to give us in-game rewards for contributing to real-world science. In Meat Space. Yeah, but don't worry, if you've never played this before, it's actually really simple. And it literally guides you through how to play on your first run. So it shouldn't take you that long before you rack up enough points. Now you can easily combine this with each of the prior methods, including the All-In Shield. Meaning that, even if you don't have the Director's Cut, you can get Schluter level drops just from combining the All-In Shield and the Butt Stallion Milk. Here, you can see that virtually all the drops are now legendary. I mean, there are a few epics here and there, but nowhere near as many as there were before. Right, now we're on to our co-op methods. Now remember when I previously said to activate the Schluter that we need to spawn and shoot a vehicle as this triggers the green aura on the left and right side, indicating that the world legendary drop chance had increased by 1000%? Yeah, no. Really? Yeah, I'm just kidding. Uh, right, well it turns out that if your loot pool is shared, say by playing on core petition or something, that it doesn't necessarily need to be you that has the Schluter at all. Yeah. You could easily have a co-op partner, or say a dummy account with a Schluter, just hanging back waiting to shoot the vehicle, while you just hang out next to the diamond loot room waiting to use the key. 
at the sound of the explosion, it will be Torque o'clock! The other alternative version to this is that you get a dummy account to do the exact same thing. It really is that simple. And like I said before, about not being able to equip a Schluter if you don't own the Director's Cut, well, yeah, the thing is you don't even need to have access to the Director's Cut to be able to gain the benefits of the Schluter in co-op, provided your co-op partner can use it, that is. Now that's more like it. Cha-ching! But the thing is, we can make this even better, as we could combine this with the Butt Stallion Milk and the All-In Shield as well. Heck, we know that the Schluter originally increased the World Legendary Drop Chance by 100,000%. So there's probably more we could do here, right? How about having three core partners instead of just one, each with a Schluter, while you use an All-In Shield, and after you trigger your Luck Booster, they take turns trying to spawn a vehicle and shoot it within the time frame. That should get us to at least around a 4,000% increase, give or take a Butt Stallion Milk being active on one or more players. Heck, we could even chuck in an extra loaded dice artifact on the person using the key just for fun. But that's probably overkill, right? Oh, fuck yeah! Anyway, that's our video guys. I hope it helps you out. As always, please remember to give this video a like and subscribe and ring that bell so you don't miss any future content. So lonely.